What's up, Legends? It's Scion. We are back, and what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the tier list. All right, so this has been this particular tier list has been a little bit dramatic. Um, people are making it dramatic, but this is what you should do with tier list. For one, you use some information to learn about characters. Um, it's fine if you want to go about who's S and who's A and who's B and C and D, but don't take it personally. At the end of the day, play what you like, play who you like, and play how you like. Uh, and like I said, just take this as information. If you don't agree with the tears, you don't have to agree with the tears. I don't agree with everything here, but this is a very good source of information to find out what the characters do. So that's what we're going to do. So we'll start with the top, which is the S rank characters. And the very first one is the Luke. And it's not in like power order, but if you notice right here, um, the Luke is probably the best DPS in the game. And see, I have a, a thing about the Luke. Um, I think the Luke is the most expensive character in this game. For one, he's one of the rarest. And two, in order to make him extreme god mode, you need all six. So when you need six, you need him first of all, and you need you need him six more times after that. So. You have Constellation 6 right here, we're going straight to it. After casting Searing Onslaught, the next two normal attacks within the next six seconds will have their damage and attack speed increased, which fixes the problem of him attacking slow because that's his major problem. He attacks really slow and it leaves you open. His dodge is slow. So at higher levels, that's a bit of a problem. It just is. And you notice down here, you know, this build can work without any constellations, but it really shines if you have all six. And pretty, pretty much saying it right here, what, what um, I initially was saying. Why can we not have this here? No extra ads. Um, so, pretty much saying what I'm saying. As far as the way that Umdaluk is built, he's okay as a, a zero constellation character if you got him one time, but you're going to start to notice that other characters are a little bit more fun to use and a little bit easier to use than him at zero. So if you get more of him, or it's like if you if you got one of him, you, you're going to need more if you're going to have the full fun of him. Now you're going to notice at Unlock the Extension 1, Umdaluk's charge attack stamina cost decreased by 50% again making him that's that's lit that's on again a major problem with him is that he runs out of stamina if you have him at zero so me in particular when he's at zero I don't think he's s to be honest with you that's just my opinion um he is the best DPS in the game I'm not saying that he's not but when he's at zero and you don't have any other pieces for him you actually are better off using somebody else as crazy as that sounds because he's gonna be slow He's gonna use up his stamina quick and that is slow and using up your stamina quick when you actually have to use your stamina to dodge to and then run around and you now have no stamina because he's a slow ass character who uses his stamina to attack you're gonna die with <laughs> dude so i don't think he's an s at zero to be honest with you but you know when you get constellation stuff He's OP. Now again, this list says no, it's not based off of that. When you go up here, units are evaluated as Constellation Zero and by their preferred rows. Um, when you put that into consideration, Duluk is not an S. He's not an S at Zero. He's just not. He, he could be an A, but not an S. Not at Zero. At, um, at Constellation, yeah, Constellation One, yes because that gets rid of one of the problems um, for him dodging and getting away from attacks and everything else like that. But again, this is my opinion. Those of you, can these ads not be here? Jesus Christ. How many ads this site got? Um, but you guys, you can see for yourself when you're playing them, you're gonna understand what I'm talking about, especially as you get stronger and you need to deal with certain things, you're gonna need your stamina and he's just not gonna have it when you're attacking him. So you're like literally better off using um, Jingling or even Amber if you need the fire because she doesn't suffer that type of thing and Jingling doesn't either. All right, so Fischl. Fischl is one of those characters that I think she deserves the S 
She has good damage. She has good range. Her um, Night Rider, which is pretty much her her um, summon, when she summons out the Raven, it's a Thomas, so it's going to attack stuff and do things on its own. It does really good damage. She's just a good and stylish character all around. Now, once you start talking about her constellations, you know, it's the very first one off the bat. Even when Oz is not present in combat, he can still watch over Fischl through his Raven eyes. When Fischl attacks an enemy, Oz fires a joint attack dealing 22% damage. So this is kind of like what Amber gets when she fires off two shots. So he kind of like joins in. Like, she's just great all the way around. Um, you get to number four, though. This is where she actually really gets OP. Uh, Constellation level four with Midnight uh, Faz Decoriga. Faz Tasmagoria is used. It deals 222% of attack electro damage to surrounding enemies. When the skill duration ends, Fischl generates 20% of her HP. That's really good. That's going to be for free when you get that out. You don't have to actually build or any type of gear for that. Stop it. And, and that's actually a really, really good. And then you just have number six, which increases her um, chance of, I mean, increases her duration of eyes out, which is the bird, and they're giving the build. So she deserves to be S. Even at zero, she deserves to be S. Um, Kiki. Kiki, literally the healer that everybody wants to get. Just gonna close this now. Um, Kiki pretty much is that, that, pretty much that healer that's going to get you through content relatively easy you don't have to worry about food um she's kind of like a uh, easy mode in the game so even at zero she's going to do all this stuff for you guys so you don't have to really worry about it she's a cryo element so she's actually more useful than kaya not that kaya is actually bad but <clears throat> she's a cryo element and she's an aoe cryo element which makes her really strong and she attacks fast and you can animation cancel out of all her stuff which is very good in this game and you guys um saw me do it in the in the stream and when i got key king um animation canceling in this game is like a pro strat but anybody could do it once you start to understand where and when you can animation cancel and get double attacks in it makes you attack faster than the game it actually intends you to actually attack and you start just wiping stuff out once you get used to it especially with sucrose sucrose is like the queen of it like i can animation leave attack with her and just blow people up because I'm pretty much stopping attacks and then starting attacks in other places and it's actually cutting off the animation and attacking faster than the system wants you to actually do it and it's absolutely sick. It's, a, it's just a, a game skill. Once you get used to it, like if you see somebody doing it, it's OP. Just get used to it. And she has that too. She, um, she pretty much can do the same damn thing, which is pretty good. Um, again, you just want to get her. She deserves to be asked. She should be higher, to be honest with you. She sh this should be like an S plus tier for her because she's definitely up there. All right, Venti. In short, Venti is a better version of Amber in, um, in the wind element. And he can actually, if you notice, um, where is it? He can actually give back. I think it's in, here we go. Storm Eye 4, which he gets really good. He also has the Sonnet. Now, here's the pro um, not the problem, but here's why he's a better version of Amber. Amber has the Barrett Bunny, and a Barrett Bunny is cool, but it doesn't hold aggro the way that it should. And even when it's near some some, some of the like, it, it's just it's a loss of DPS actually throwing it out. To be honest with you, it's going to keep stuff off you for you know most of the time. But once you're used to actually playing a game, you don't need that crutch anymore. So she's kind of like the character that, kind of like your training wheels character. She's still super good in my opinion. She should not be in D rank, but with um, if you have somebody like Venti official, you don't need Amber anymore. You can go with Yingling, or if you have the Luke or somebody else for fire, even Klee would be a better option for fire over Amber at that point. But you know, as far as uh, this, Venti deserves to be an S. I don't think it would be an S plus. Uh, but he's definitely useful, especially with the regenerate energy for Venti after the effects of Wind's Grand. And if the elemental absorber is cursed, this also gives 15 energy to all other characters who with the corresponding element, which is pretty much Wind. So any other Wind character that you have out there, it's pretty nice. Then you also have down here all of his passives. Every like every thing that you get additional with him just is just crazy. Now. 
his additional arrow shot that he gets at one is higher than both Fischl and Amber. Because, you know, Fischl is 22%, Amber's 25%, and he's 33 So that's actually pretty good. So he's, like, just a better archer overall. But then you just get the rest of the stuff right here. He's just a, a better archer. He's the best archer in the game that you guys can get. You can go with an aim shot build, which is totally what I agree with. Get charge attack and do some pretty good damage. Nasty damage. So that's it. He deserves his spot. Definitely. And then you have Barber. Um, I think Barber actually deserves to be S because Barber is tanky and healy at the same time. Um, you get her at level 20 free as long as you um, get your um, AR up to that. So definitely take advantage of that because she, if you have not got Kiki or any other um, type of healer, then she's the free healer that you're going to get. And I think she's higher than A, to be honest with you. <clears throat> she's a little bit slow. She doesn't have the same animation cancel as other um, characters because she's a little bit slow, but she makes up for it with the ability to actually be able to heal. She heals party, so if you're doing co-op, you can take her into co-op and be kind of OP with her. She's just a pretty good character all the way around. She's like Shiny and Miracle here's friendly forces and all party members for a large amount that scales with Barbara's max HP. So what you're going to want to do is any gear that you get that has HP percent on it, you want to rock that and get that HP percent as high as you can. Um, again, you want to get Maiden below right here. Really nice. <clears throat> This is, this is pretty much the only thing that you can actually do with her as far as gear. Well, it's not the only thing, but it's the best one, anyway. And maybe you want to get something that gives you a recharge, energy recharge, so you can heal more. That might be a case as well, but you definitely want to go after getting as much HP as possible with Barbara. So we're going to try to do this fast. Chong Yoon, I'm like, eh. I'm like, eh. He, he, he's okay. But I honestly much rather have other options right here. He's a little bit weird in his, um, in his usage and he doesn't animation cancel. So, and then on top of that, he's slow. So that, that's kind of a, um, a problem for me. I actually would bump him out of A, to be honest with you. Jean is another type of healer, but she's a little bit more selfish with her heals. As you can see, she heals herself, basically, and she can actually heal herself with the Dandelion Breeze. I mean, she can actually heal the team with her dandelion breeze, but it's more or less she's it's iffy. She's not like Barbara, basically, but when a single target, more DPS type, she's like a paladin, basically. That's the that's the best way to describe her. She's a paladin. And when you go down right here, she's elemental damage, increase the burst and everything. So she's like that DPS hybrid that can break the game if you get her strong enough to the point that she's just running around here just doing damage and being able to heal people while she's doing the damage that's actually you know pretty good she can she can do her thing like that so i would actually put her up around s but she's not as strong as the other single target characters in the game so that's probably why they put her at a but i think she's an s to be honest with you he king which is my baby i love this character now, I'm going to tell you why I'm so big on this character. She definitely is an ass. Um, she can animation cancel off everything that she does. Every single thing she does. You can even stop her special if you want to and go into something else. If you, if you see that her special is going to lead you into some, somewhere, somewhere bad, you can cancel that shit. Like mid with her dashing and doing her little devil may cry stuff all over the place, you can just literally cancel out of it and go into something else you can hold down the special attack where it says hold right there and she'll literally stop and then do her charge attack hit the enemy and bounce back into safety like she is such an op character that is crazy it, it, she's so much fun so you notice that um her number one right here is ascension within five seconds of recasting stellar restoration while Lightning Stiletto is present, he can normal charge attacks with converted to electro damage. Now what that does, being that she attacks so fast, is put an extra punch on top of her lightning damage, which pretty much shred enemies, so it's pretty good if you get that ascension. I don't have it actually. Um, Constellation, recast and stellar restoration while lightning stiletto is present, it causes Key King to deal 50% of her attack as AoE damage. So she technically isn't really an AoE character, but 
when you get this now out, you can actually do that. And then it's going to do that from the start of her terminus bleak. So once you start doing that and just going back and forth through enemies, you just end up doing like the splash damage over everything, which is just really nasty, really crazy. Now, once you get the um, Constellation 6, when initially in a normal attack, charge attack, or elemental skill, or elemental burst, you can gain 6% electrical damage. <clears throat> excuse me for eight seconds effects triggers by normal attack charge elemental skills and everything else so you add this on top of everything else she just scales ridiculously and does like a whole bunch of electric damage you can do your thing with it um this i guess is okay um i would probably go with crit to be honest with you because of how much she hits people it might be a thing a little bit better than this because she actually hits quickly and a lot with all her combos and everything else. So I think crit might be a little bit better in that case. All right, uh, Mona. <clears throat> now, for obvious reasons, most people who like this game like Mona because she's sexy and everything else. However, like Sucrose, Mona can animation cancel off her spell casting. And what that basically does is um, allows her to shred stuff AOE wise. And then on top of that, she has this thing called Illusionary Phantom, as you see right there, which taunts. Now, you throw in the fact that you can AOE shred down enemies, animation cancel and attack them even faster. And they're not even going to hit you because they're after the Phantom. That makes her hella broken. I don't know if she's an S because her damage is really not that high when you look compared to other people. But her CC is great. Her CC is absolutely great. Like, I don't think there's anybody um, better right now in the game. Well, Sucrose is kind of close, but I think she's a little bit better with that because she can actually control range um, and bosses do actually pay attention to taunting stuff. So, it does that. <clears throat> Excuse me. She also has this thing called Alternate Spirit. Um, Mona cloaks herself within the water flow, consuming stamina to move more quickly. When under the effect of Illusionary Torrent, Mona can move at high speed on water, applies the, the water step, or applies the wet status to nearby enemies when she reappears. Now, this you can actually use as a little bit of a cheese to run around a little bit faster than a normal run. It's up to you if you want to actually do that. Here's the Ascension things right here. I'm kind of like, eh on that um if i get her i get her but i kind of already got the character i want but i wouldn't definitely mind getting her she's very good at zero constellation you don't need to actually get her to her other constellations for her to be good she's just one of those characters that's good all the way no matter what now they went energy recharge right here for both of them twice which is probably good this would probably be better for barbara to be honest with you but yeah Razor, Razor suffers the same problem that um, Deluke has. The problem with Razor is he does not have the same damage that Deluke has. Um, in his Lightning Fang, sometimes you kill enemies and you may kill enemies too fast. And then it's just a complete loss of DPS because you can't cut the Lightning Fang off. It's just out there and it's going to be there for the, the duration and then go away after that because that's when the wolf comes out and comes on top of you and like you have you have extra claws that can attack and everything else it looks cool it works cool when you have a bunch of enemies that can actually sit there for that but you know as with the claymore characters in this game have a bit of a problem they in my opinion they 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 need attack speed you need items that will give attack speed for them to be to work out a little bit better so this is the passes right here that he gets when he has his ascension the um the sprinting right there that's I like that that the sprinting right there that passes but you know that's yeah so constellation um picking up elemental oil of a particle increases razor's damage by 10 percent that's cute this is cute and all but i'm like eh, i as a, a constellation one for getting the dupe of him mm, mm. Uh, Constellation 2 increased the crit rate against enemies at 30%. So that's kind of like a, a death type of sentence that you get up. And his 6 is kind of okay. The um, sword charges up and normal attacks. It's kind of what the loop does base. Like Duke just kind of like does this in fire like as his special. And you know he has it as a Constellation 6. So you need 6 pieces of him to do what the loop already does. So yeah. And kind of same thing. They're getting Gladiator's finale for that. 
All right, so you have the main character. So the main character is kind of like the same through majority of his stuff, and he can kind of animation cancel kind of the same way. Uh, other characters can. Um, he can animation cancel off of everything. He or she, depending on who you pick. Uh, he's not as fast as the other characters. He's kind of a little bit. He's definitely faster than Claymore's, but just a little bit faster than Claymore's. So that kind of leaves him a little bit, a little less useful than Key King and other characters like that that can move fast. Still good though. Still um, a good character, especially in Wind. In Wind, he has good AOE and good knockback. And the elemental gust surge right here, you can knock enemies and drag them across the screen. And then while they're in the tornado, you change to another character, whoever you want. Or if it's, if it's lightning, fire, or ice, you can turn the elemental tornado into that element. And that ends up being um, pretty useful. You do a lot of damage with that too. As you see with the ascension right here, um, kills regenerate 5%. So this is actually pretty nice when it comes to a gaming where you want to just run around and do grinding and stuff like that. No one will have to worry about food. You'll just get his health back and it's pretty nice, right? All right, so then you have the vortex and stuff like that. So here's the thing with this, this vortex starts to get really amped up and really nice once you get him up to the higher constellations and that's basically through story you don't necessarily get parts of them you get parts through story so then you have this and they went with um increased swirl damage there uh i don't know where you get this from because i've never seen this weapon anywhere so i can't advise you on this weapon set i've just never seen this weapon before so it's probably somewhere but i just never seen it in the beta so you have jingling um Jingling, rather, I'm sorry. She is, um, I almost hate to say this, but if I get her, I would use her over um, Deluc and Fire for the main reason is that she's faster and she doesn't use up stamina to actually dodge and get out of stuff with her, you know, with her moves. She uses stamina with her charge attack, and that's kind of like all characters really do that, but she doesn't use it with the majority of her other stuff like Diluc does, and that, and she's faster, so she can get it the hell out the way and stuff, which is pretty good. Um, this is weird, her panda, which kind of, you know, breathes fire and then comes out. It's kind of inefficient, and probably why she's not that high up, because it's kind of the same thing like the Barrett Bunny. It just is like out there. It takes time to actually attack. And you can just aim it like in a wrong area or it could just aim itself in the wrong area and then it's just wasted at that point. So it's just kind of like GG. Um, you have Pyronado, which pretty much is her spinning around doing her fire attack, which is okay. Um, <clears throat> like I said, she is a faster character compared to Duluc, so she has... Um, she has use when it comes to that as far as fire um i oh i almost i would prefer to have a faster character but i almost want to drop her down because a lot of her stuff is actually you know what i don't even know why i say if i do have her i did get her i just forgot but yeah i do have her um i almost want to drop her down and you know as far as with amber i put her and her and amber in the same tier to be honest with you, as far as when it comes to fire, because Amber is just easier to deal the fire damage because she's going to deal fire damage off of her aim shot and be safer than being in the face of most stuff. But sometimes you want to do that just to get um, combos out and some enemies are better to be up close to them because they can actually fire faster than you or make it easier to just get to them. So, you know, it's up to you guys at that point. Do you want a melee character? You want a, a ranged character and fire. I think they're a toss up in there. It just depends on which one that you want to actually use. But with that said, she's okay. And she's another character that she heavily is better with her constellation up. Because you start, start to see that the um, increase the groove attack and the duration of Pyronado uh, is increased. And then right here, the duration of Pyronado again and all party members receive 15% pyro damage. Like she does, she heavily gets favor from getting her constellation. So she's just one of those characters. We're gonna come up to a character that also is optimal for that. And then you have Zhao. All right, so let's get you out of here. 
Again, he is a polearm character. Uh, typically, um, unfortunate for him, he's in wind. And you have the main character who's in wind. You have Sucrose who's in wind, who I believe is way better than him. Um, and then you have Gene, who's also in wind. So he kind of gets left behind because he has characters that kind of just do everything better than what he does at the point. Now, you do also see right here at Constellation 2, we're in the party, but not currently active. Our energy recharge is increased by 20, 25%. So he actually gets his special a lot quicker. And you no, know, he's okay. As you guys can see, he's actually kind of tanky, but oh, I'm sorry, I skipped over it right here. When he falls to HP to below 50%, he gains 100%. Defense bonus, um, this does not have a timer. So I'm assuming this stays. I've never actually had him, but I've actually watched people use him and watched the things, everything else. And looking at what this is right now, I don't think that this kit in its form is better than the main character, Wind or Gene or Sucrose, to be honest with you. So it's, you know, I could be wrong. Again, this is my opinion, but I don't think that he's better than them. All right, so now we're in to B, where we have Kea. Kea is your intro ice character. He is pretty useful. I really don't have anything bad to say about him or super good. He's just really good. He can animation cancel everything. He uh, his frost gnar, which is basically an ice spray forward. It works as what it's supposed to. It's very column specific and goes like straight forward. You don't get much AOE in front of it at all and i think he has one of the worst specials of the game which is the, gr the glacial waltz where he pretty much has icicles that fly around him which is cute and all may freeze stuff but it does not do a lot of damage and it just seems like it just doesn't even last that long but yeah eight seconds like it, it easily might be the worst special in the game like as i'm thinking about it, i don't think there's anything as trash as this special um, once you get him to a higher extent, uh, on the ascension, you see you get additional ice particles in use and you get glacial walls, you get it a little bit longer. So he may be somebody, again, you see down here, like, he may really just need Constellation 6 for that to actually be good. And that's actually a bad thing because he is using so much passives and constellation stuff here just to make that one move good it's hardly worth it to be honest with you now frozen kiss triggers automatic when k's hp is below 20 percent creates a shield that absorbs damage equal to 30 percent of k's max hp pretty good kind of works like um noel shield but eh situational it can't cut it on early so he's okay but as soon as you get a better ice character he gotta go <laughs> um Klee. now Klee i had in cbt i wasn't too enamored um with Klee. Klee also can attack fast but her animations um two of her attacks you can't stop it so once she spins and actually puts the charge out it's just out there and her elemental skill um she pretty much has these like bombs that she throws out this is another one of those things that it can go into an area of being completely useless and it just you just lose dps at that point so you kind of you kind of find yourself like am i really going to land this shot and if i'm gonna throw it out there then yes and then if no eh -eh. so you also have spark slap uh, splash um please blaze and delight for the duration and this ability continually summons spark and slash which is at splash which is actually good this super is actually good and does a lot of damn damage but if you actually get stuff into it and just keep her doing the aoe damage she actually does a good deal of damage um i don't have anything necessarily bad to say about her she's not great she's not good um this tier is going to be like that for the most part most of the characters are like that now here is who i think the most misunderstood and technical character in the game ning gong now when you get her and you use her, you're like, this character sucks. And I actually was like that at first. But what she is basically is uh, she is designed for you to set up her geo buff 
onto other characters. Now, see the Jade screen is considered a geo construct, can be used to block certain attacks and cannot be climbed. Um, Jade screen may exist at one time. What it pretty much does is it's gonna put a shield out and what you can do is you can fire through that shield and get the geo buff. Now the geo buff actually is gonna either put out shards on another elemental attack like water or something like that or give you a shield. So what you can do for her is when you're in a certain land, like you need to actually use her and I'm thinking Lingyu land because there's a lot of um, geo stuff out there to unlock. She is actually pretty good when it comes to that, but that's like her only niche at the end of the day. And she literally might be the number one character in the game that needs all of her ascension and all of her constellation out there. Uh, as you can see right here, once she gets to constellation six, her star shatter, which is her single target nuke, which is technically her only real attack besides her normal attacks because the Jade shield pretty much is, um, a setup for other people to attack with and keep range attacks from you. Um, Star Shatter actually becomes like a single target nuke, which makes her really good, like really, really good. And then you have the increased level with Star Shatter, which, you know, maximum grade, everything else. It becomes super strong between three and six. So she might be, like I said, the one that needs the most of the constellations, even her constellation one. Normal attacks deal AOE damage when it's just by herself at zero. She's almost useless. She's almost useless as a, as a zero, and then people think that she really sucks, but she shines heavily when she gets to Constellation Six. Like, good God, it, it don't like she actually is like God tier at that point. But that's gonna cost you so much, and who's gonna really want to do that other than her looking like a complete dick bay? It's just like, yeah. It's, it's unfortunate. Um, she's probably going to be the one that they're going to have to buff and do something with in the future because not a lot of people are probably going to get the Constellation 6 or even care to when they say that she sucks and everything else like that. So, you know, it is what it is. She also has the Elemental Resistance buff right there at number four. Like, like all her good stuff is in her Constellation. And then when you just look at just her normal stuff and what she does, and it's just like, uh, like, oh, like, no, no, like, you're cute. You're cute. That, that's what you're going to say. <laughs> so that's unfortunate. All right. Sucrose. This is my, this is my, my little bay right here. I don't know how old she is, so maybe I shouldn't even say bay, but this young lady right here can cancel everything that she does. And then on top of that, she can throw attacks out and you can cancel the animation directly after attack. So when she spins and throws out the stable, you know, her stasis creation 638, the minute that she throws it out, you can hit the attack button and she will stop spinning before what she throws out and go straight to attack. So this thing will be in the air and she will be attacking or you can move or dodge if something's right next to you. That is absolutely OP because not every character in the game can do shit like that. I think Amber can and the Reigns characters can, like um, like Fischl and Venti, but she can too. And you have no idea how OP that is as far as the everything. Now, what you can do, and you probably seen me do this in the video before, which is why I'm, I'm putting emphasis on how good this is. This is just a skill thing. You have to actually know to do this and try it out, guys. Trust me, try it out. When you throw out a stable, you can literally, if you are fast enough and you, you spam new keys, you throw the stable and then while literally one second while it's out in the air, if you have forbidden creation up, you can throw that out literally the next second and the following second after that go into normal attack. Cancel your normal attack into charge attack and you now hit the enemy between three to four seconds, four to five times on top of what both um, a stable knockup does and then forbidden creation has also a knockup and you can actually keep repeating the normal attack what i basically do is i do a normal attack after that and then charge attack and then you can actually cancel out a charge attack back into the normal attack again she is absolutely bonkers there is no reason this character should be b other than people just didn't know how to use her it's just clueless because it's cool she's an aoe goddess will kill every goddamn thing that's around you in the world like and especially and i don't even have the gear that i want to have right let me get a five star piece of gear or watch what i do with this character 
to obliterate everybody. Single target, no, we, we ain't talking about single target. She's not. A, she is not a single target, single target queen. So we ain't talking about that. We talking about in the world, CC knock up, blow everybody the fuck up, like, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, like there is no way this character is a B. You can't have that. Whoever made this tier list, you just didn't know how to use the character. You, mm-mm, no, no, you can't have that one. I disagree strongly on that. Um, so the traveler, which is pretty much the main character, um, pretty much on Earth, right here, it's kind of like an air. Like it's, it's an air. It's not as good as wind, to be honest with you. Um, you have good AOE, and it's kind of like what it pretty much does. It makes the character more of an AOE target, but it's kind of like a, I, I, I want to say a useless AOE, not as great as. Um, not as great as wind, and it definitely needs the constellations, as you see. You know, create a barrier wake that lasts and over a star for a sword, all that type of stuff. Like you, you need constellation power more with um with the earth than with the wind. So kind of like an air. And then can you go in, please? Thank you. And then you have um you can see, uh, support. He's a hydro. Again, I don't have anything bad to say. I don't have anything good. This character just seemed a little bit meh to me. Maybe somebody, um, maybe somebody could, you know, um, let me know a little bit more. But I will say one thing. If you want somebody to be a world grinder so you don't have to actually put much um, food out or worry about feeding them, this would be it. Because if you get two of him, when a rain sword is shattered or when the duration expires, regenerates current HP health based off of 6% of the max. So you get to actually do the rain sword actually quite a lot, as you guys can see. Initiate blade or fight an illusionary sword rain. Like, especially in if you get uh, something that lowers the cooldown and makes you um, get your cooldown faster. You see the duration is 15 seconds, the CD is 20 seconds. So technically you can actually do that three times in one minute and you can get that time down with recharge. So you essentially can constantly keep healing yourself as this goes along. That's actually really good. But again, at zero, like eh, like if, if you have them at zero, it's kind of like eh. <laughs> Like you might as well use Barbara at that case, and she's also hydro and better. So it's unfortunate for him, to say the least. All right, so we got the last five characters. I do apologize for how long this is taking. I was trying to talk as fast as I can because I, I know people. Like this is just people keep axing about this and tier lists and everything else. And this is again, this is just my opinion. I'm not saying it's any better than anybody else's or that I need to be listened to any better than anybody else um it's just how i feel and based off of my experiences and the beta going into launch and everything else like that who do i feel is better you can take it for what you want and do what you want at that point but i hope that i helped you along that you can make your own valid decisions uh, so beidou beidou is actually pretty fun beidou is actually a claymore class that i don't really know where to put her to be honest with you, because I definitely think she's better than a B. To be honest with you, especially with her um her hold right there, lifts the weapon up as a shield, max damage absorbed, scales off of Beta's max attacks using attacks using this um energy sword with the great sword of release. Now, what this does is you can kind of use it a little bit as a parry. You can use it a little bit as a counter, and that makes her a very technical character. Most people who like the button mash are just gonna go right past this and not really understand how to use Beidou properly. And that's gonna be a majority of the population. They're gonna see this and be like, this is ass, I don't wanna do this and, and go about their business. But she's actually a really fun and useful character. You can actually, <clears throat> excuse me. You can use her to lower um, stamina as far as swimming, which I guess is interesting. I, I just try to fly over every damn thing, but okay. Um, gain the following effects right here, the Tide Caller. This is actually pretty nice as well. Then you start to go down to her constellations. Um, constellation one, uh, when Stormbreaker is used, creates a shield that absorbs up to 16% of Beidou's HP for 15 seconds. 
this is where she starts to actually become a little bit OP, good for um, bosses and stuff like this. this. Is why again I said that people probably look beyond this and Beidou actually is a four star, so you might actually get two or three of her before you get other characters. So definitely, if you're looking for like a tank or something like that, or, or electric character, and you didn't get Kikang yet, you don't like to use Lisa. Beidou is actually really good, so don't don't sleep on that. Don't sleep on it. She's actually not that bad. Then you have your constellation right here, six duration of Stormbreaker, electric resistance of the surrounding enemies is decreased by 15%. That's just a, a increased damage buff. Um, her six, her constellation six seems like it should be like a, a two constellation or something like that. Like they should increase her shield or something like that. That seems kind of meh. And then you have the martial artist again for the set bonus. Um, Bennett, or maybe Benoit. This is what I'm called Bennett because I can. Anyway, all right. So Bennett, pretty much again, this is another one of those characters that, as you guys can see, is a fire unit up here. Uh, middle ground. I think he actually deserves to be where he's at. To be honest with you, if if we're being completely completely fair, uh, he does have an interesting thing right here in Fantastic Voyage Bennett's Leap. Jumps towards the enemy, performing the punches to attack Pyro, creating an inspiration field. If the health of the character in the circle is equal to or falls below 70%, their health is continually regenerated and scales based off of its max HP. Now, this is extremely situational and makes it to the point of that you basically can just always go back to 70% HP if you're lower than 70%, um, which is interesting, but it's very situational and kind of like but want to do a little something something else um but what you can do is you can tag out if somebody else is weak and then put them in that inspiration field so again this is situational it's very cute as you guys can see it's something very cute and you can actually increase on that down here and everything else so again i i i can't see myself actually using this character um unless maybe one day i'm bored to be honest with you guys, but he, he's very novel and niche, a niche character. All right, Lisa. Lisa is the incredibly sexy, seductive uh, maids character that you get for free, electric. Uh, Lisa actually is a very good character. You can't animation cancel everything. I know I keep saying that a lot, but it's very important to me in this game because it increases your DPS when you learn how to do it properly. However, when she's done with her spins, basically you can animation cancel. You can't animation cancel before it, which is weird. Like she'll do, she'll, she'll make the sound, she'll go, ha, ah, but she'll still spin and then do the attack outside of the spin. So I'm like, it's weird that she does that. But what you can do to cancel that, she does have one cancel. Her E attack will cancel her normal attacks, which she pretty much will. She'll hop back and do her little lightning hands and everything. and jiggle with that she normally does um the e will cancel out of that so that you once you get used to it you can actually get used to weaving and it'll actually look kind of cool when you get used to weaving her lightning attacks and getting the e in and start learning how to do the charge attacks and go through like that it just takes a little bit more practice than the other characters it's not as easy um as you would think and i think that that combined with her lightning rose is actually really good because the lightning rose actually stays out as you see duration 15 seconds and if you go down right here she can actually have it hit enemies and decrease defense so it's a defense break at ascension 4 and you go down further lightning rose increase the level get increases the damage of it then you go down to four in constellation increases the lightning bolts so uh, it becomes some really good stuff now um violet arc which is pretty much the uh, the thing where she puts her hand out and then puts the AOE around. Um, you need to actually let her charge that all the way out to the, the circle fill enough to do the AOE attack, but she's liable to be hit. What happens right here is they're gonna increase the damage and that, so pretty much the Violet Arc, you get 25% and increases the resistance of um, interruption so she doesn't get knocked out of it so you can actually get it off. I would prefer to just make it faster than that so I don't get freaking hit, but you know, whatever. <laughs> um, 
So with her, they they're saying to do elemental damage, elemental burst increases the party members' attack by twenty seconds. Eh, I, I think that's it's relatively good. I, I like that. Then you have Noel. Um, Noel again is one of those characters that's super tanky. The same way that Beidou is, um, and so these are going to be another one of those characters again that's going to be overlooked because she is a Claymore character. The Claymore characters are not glamorous in this game. They are super slow. They use a bad stamina, and if you don't have things to actually um, facilitate helping her stamina, then you're going to be a little bit in trouble. Now, where Noelle shines is in her awakening and her uh, constellation. Uh, she's again another one who's probably going to be a little bit more expensive. Her first one in Ascension 1, creates a shield that lasts 20 um, seconds and absorbs damage for Noelle's defense. So you want to stack defense on Noelle more than you want to stack. Well, you still want HP, but you want defense because both of her shields from her devotion right here and her mainline shield from her skill up here. Let me show you right here. Breastplate, as you can see, this shield damage absorption scales off Noel's defense. So you want defense percent, you want defense as high as possible and get it in there. Um, as you can see her, let's go down to the constellation. You really want Noel to get a bunch of constellations. Like you just want six of her. Cause once she gets to six, she is actually a freaking juggernaut type of tank and can do some good decent damage as you can see and she'll do aoe damage when you get to be cleaned um sweeper the sweeping time actually becomes stronger sweeping time increases noel's attack by additional 50 percent of her defense so again you want to be stacking that defense to have her be like a super tank and again most people are probably going to look over this character because they're going to think it's trash but she's actually really strong once you get her up to constellation six um but other than that you probably just should just use her to unlock some geo nodes or something like that and just kind of like leave her to the side if you can if you um get like maybe constellation one then you get the healing effect on top of that so you know that's neither here nor there it's up to you I'm leaving that to you guys um defenders will of course Get that defense up by 30%. Get the um, defense increase right here for Lucky Dog. And that this is perfectly fine. That's what you're supposed to do for her. And last but not least is Amber. And we are finally at the end after damn near almost 50 minutes. And my voice is getting tired. But Amber should not be a D, to be honest with you. Amber is actually a really good character. Um, she's the safest character in this game. You can pretty much beat all content in this game with Amber and she's literally the first character that you get besides the main character um with that said as you can see she can actually get some really good dps uh adds on to with her ascension as for fire rain um aim shots um once you get used to aiming and that's the thing with the range characters you have to be good at aiming but once you get used to aiming and actually land your aim shots on all the weak points against enemies you do some sick damage like some really sick damage but you can't miss you gotta be good at aiming if you're not good at aiming just don't use archers just heads up um decrease because the archers are all about aim shot that's why i'm saying that not to say that anybody is bad or anything else like that you just you have to land aim shots with archers and if you can't do that just don't use them um, Gliding Champion, she, this is good because she pretty much gets this automatically as unlock and you can use that to get to far places with her GG. Um, now I have this because I actually got two of her, uh, one arrow to rule them all and fires two arrows per aim shot. Um, oh actually hers is even lower than what Venti's was, um, it's 20%. Uh, the second arrow will do 20% of the first uh, arrow's damage. So even if you do like 20,000 or something like that, it's only going to be 20,000. I mean, it's only going to be doing um, 4,000 or 20,000. So that's pretty much like a um, quick math for you guys. Um, Bunny triggered Baron Bunny, new improved hitting um, Baron Bunny's foot with a fully charged aim shot, manually detonates it, which makes this now more useful than what it was before. So that you, now if you throw it out, you can just shoot it in the foot and it will blow up everything and do 200% more damage. Um, it burns, as you see fiery rain gets increased on that. Um, it's not just any doll, it decreases the um, explosive puppet CD by 20% and adds an additional charge, which is pretty cool. Um, one of the things that uh, 
makes Amber a problem and puts her down the tier list. I still, I still think she's not a D, but they put a lot into um, Baron Bunny, and you can just simply miss, and it'd be useful. I mean, useless, or the enemy will run away from it, or not even pay attention to it when it's taunting, and then it's just not even that good, to be honest with you. So, and then you have her constellation six, which is also a problem. Fiery Rain, the Amber uh, movement speed, increases Amber's movement speed by 15% and base attack by 15% for 10 seconds. That's not long enough, and that's kind of meh for a 6 console. You, you get this character 6 times, and that's literally you just get like a 15% buff and a speed buff for doing Fiery Rain. Nah, that's, that's kind of meh, and probably why people are not that big on her, but as far as a fire unit, over the course, I think she's easily like a C. I don't think she's the, like the worst character in the game, to be honest with you. Um, I would put Bennett <laughs> like there because he is super situational. And yeah, I would just put her like worse or something like that. But you know, all these characters could be used in the game and be useful. So don't get too caught up in that. Um, get good with all of them, as you guys can see and have some fun with that and as you can see you know exploration she has an s because pretty much she has an s because she can fly every damn where but i think any of the um archer characters should be higher because they can actually fight bosses and enemies and be 100 percent safe as long as you're not a block so that's all i got for you guys um i'll leave the link in the description for this i hope you understood i hope this solves a lot of questions people ask so who's good who's not good and understand that this game is more or less about who you like and how you want to play the game more so than who's overpowered who's op and whatever else you can kind of like make your own decision um i'm not going to make any type of tier list but i just want to explain the characters a little bit so you can understand each one and make your choices from there so i will catch you guys in the next video be legendary and good luck to you on your summons